let's talk about gaming on a budget. <laughs> how much do you spend on video games? More importantly, how much do you spend on video games that you end up never playing? I think these are interesting topics and I want to have a discussion. Let's have a discussion down below. I'm gonna start off by saying that I remember when I was a teenager, okay? There was a point in time in my life where I had very little. I did grow up getting games for birthday and Christmas and such, you know, pretty normal kid. I got pretty much the normal amount of normal stuff, normal, you know? Now, uh, up in my teenage years, I started buying my games for myself and I had to save up in order to get a game. And I remember this. I felt like it would be the end of the world if I saved up money and got one game because I knew I could probably maybe afford one game per month, if that. And even by that, I was lucky sort of thing. You know, when you are like in school, teenager, that sort of place in life. I did a lot of research before purchasing a game. And I do realize that I have two cats in the room. <laughs> they found the merch bin. So I have a few tips and tricks on how we can do gaming on the budget. I mean, nowadays compared to when I was a teenager back in my day, you know. <laughs> It is much easier to make decisions right now because of the internet and video reviews on YouTube. I didn't necessarily have access to that sort of thing when I was like an early teenager because YouTube wasn't even a thing yet back then. We had magazines and stuff. We did have access to some sort of things, but uh, we had to be very, at least I felt like I had to be very careful with my um, decisions. It's easier now is what I want to say. You have YouTube video reviews. This is where credibility is crucial. I mean, imagine if you have have such a tight budget that you can responsibly afford one game a month. Do you trust the reviewer that's saying it's a good game? Do you trust me? I hope you do. I have some YouTubers that I swear by. It's like, if they say it's good, I know it's good because they have been correct so many times sort of thing. So my first recommendation is put games that you want into wish lists. Now Steam has a wish list system, Nintendo definitely has one and I use that all the time. I use them for all they're worth. I check my wish list on Nintendo eShop, I want to say every other day at least to check and see which games are on sale because I feel better when I purchase games on sale, don't we all? That's probably why sales videos are so popular. But anyways, that is a thing that I do a lot. I wait for games very often to go on sale and so should you. Because they just often do go on sale. Mushy pussy. He's such a baby. Now my second recommendation, <laughs> which is a sort of thing that you already know. Do a good amount of research before buying a game. Now when it comes to reviews and such, I do my research both on Metacritic and YouTube reviews. And also I have a pretty good understanding of what I do enjoy already in games. I mean, is it a sequel to a game that I already love? Sure, then it's a no-brainer. Is it a Zelda or Mario or any series that I truly, truly love, like Elder Scrolls? Then it's a no-brainer. I would pump uh, $70 into any sort of game that I know that I would like. And I also want to say, play demos when they are available. If there is a demo, it can actually alter your first impression overall, which then again saves you. And I want to say, if I get more than 50 hours out of a game, then I am very happy with my amount of value that I got out of the game. How many hours do you want to have <laughs> to not feel ripped off of your $60? This is sort of the discussion I want to have in the comments section. Now, if a game gives me more than 100 hours, <laughs> then I say great value. Like from the top of my head, Assassin's Creed Origins, a game that I bought on sale, I think I paid $15 and it gave me 130 hours of incredibly high quality gameplay. Such a time, such a game. Now my third recommendation is that you can actually buy physical if you are the type of person that wants to resell your game when you're done with it. Get some sort of budget back that you can put into the next game. This is a system that a lot of people are using. I do realize this since I am very into digital games that I can never resell them. They are attached to my account. But then again, I do think there are pros and cons with both 
both digital and physical and I've talked about that several times. With digital, I just find it more convenient. Now my fourth recommendation is that if you have the option to do so, try and do game hunting in your local game stores. If you have any. We don't have any of that in my city. I mean, look at this video. This is pretty much all we have. But I mean, like, uh, if you live in a bigger city, let's say, like, I did game hunting in London, which just provided a bigger experience for me than my local city, do that because you can often find bargain bins and you can save quite a bit by finding games secondhand also, which brings me to Facebook Marketplace, guys. Now, my fifth recommendation, the most budget-friendly games, arguably, are free-to-play games, but it could be a trap. They do have microtransactions within them, and you know this, so I mean, beware of that. Now I have a story, actually. You know my friend Katrina about that. She hasn't been on my channel for a very long time. Uh, she got a Switch. She did not buy any games for her Switch for a couple of years, actually. So she was playing free-to-play games and demos. She has now bought some games, though. Animal Crossing and such. Now, tip number six is get games that will last you forever. And like I said, any game that has lasted me over 100 hours is like um, value heaven. And here are some Switch games that has lasted me over 100 hours. If I'm gonna mention some, uh, I would say Dragon Quest Builders 2. That game is very big, very long, a lot of value, definitely. I think that is a safe bet. 120 hours into that game, I think. Of course, we have Skyrim, which is a very forever game, in my opinion. Open world, high fantasy RPG, with magic, swords, bows, plenty of cities, side quests, main quests, places to go. It's a world. I think I have a thousand hours combined across all my save files in Skyrim by now. Zelda Breath of the Wild, I can say the same for that game, almost. Open world, Zelda game, you can tame horses, visit a lot of villages and stuff, meet interesting people, ride around. Such a game. Now my last recommendation for gaming on a budget is try and delve into Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Premium. Okay, so Xbox Game Pass, it is actually set up that way that you don't necessarily need to have a physical Xbox console. You can enjoy Xbox Game Pass on your PC in the Xbox app that is probably already on your computer and that is Game Pass and which means Netflix with games sort of thing. Now that is quite budget friendly if you ask me. If you are the type of person that likes to game jump a lot. And I have been enjoying PlayStation Premium quite a bit. I have found tons of games on there that I'm enjoying. So as an ending note, be responsible, pay your rent, and everything will work out fine. Now, do you have a story of a game that you regretted buying? Leave it down below. How much do you spend on gaming? Pick up your phone and leave a comment down below because I know you're watching on TV right now. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.